est important point à l'ordre du jour de la 67e session. Euh, toutefois, partageant largement ces orientations, le Sénégal voudrait apporter quelques suggestions par rapport à ce document-là. En effet, relativement au manque de fidélisation des personnels de santé, la disponibilité des agents de santé reste un enjeu pour les États membres dans la perspective de l'atteinte des ODD et de la couverture sanitaire universelle. L'inégale répartition des personnels de santé entre centres urbains et zones rurales reste encore pour nos pays une hypothèque pour nos systèmes de santé. Au Sénégal, c'est une expérience que nous avons et qui est un peu partagée avec d'autres pays, le programme d'urgence de développement communautaire, le PUDC, a fortement amélioré, amélioré l'accès à l'eau, l'énergie solaire et le désaccablement de certaines zones par la construction de routes. Toutes choses qui améliorent la fidélisation du personnel de santé. Donc, par rapport à ce point, nous voulions faire cette suggestion suivante. L'OMS, l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, doit davantage accompagner techniquement les pays dans le développement de l'approche multisectorielle parce qu'elle permet une prise en compte correcte et objective des besoins du secteur de la santé par les autres sectoriels. De même, des organisations régionales et sous-régionales telles que la CDAO, lui et moi, devraient être sensibilisées pour, apporter, pour appuyer une mobilisation plus accrue de ressources financières en direction des recrutements massifs de personnel. Par rapport au point relatif à la capacité insuffisante d'éducation et de formation des ressources humaines pour la santé, le Sénégal partage largement dans l'analyse du rapport, ayant très tôt compris l'importance d'accroître la production de ressources humaines. Aussi, le plan national de développement des ressources humaines qui a été élaboré par notre pays va dans le sens de l'amélioration de la qualité de la formation, d'une disponibilité plus forte d'agents et le renforcement de la formation des spécialistes. À ce niveau, la suggestion faite par notre pays, c'est de demander l'appui de l'OMS qui est attendu pour l'ensemble des pays de la région africaine à travers l'élaboration et la mise en œuvre de plans régionaux de développement des ressources humaines avec un partenariat plus fort avec les secteurs universitaires et les secteurs privés. En conclusion, le Sénégal adopte le document et invite les autres pays membres à en faire de même. Je vous remercie, Madame la Présidente. Euh, merci le Sénégal. Nous retenons en tout cas un point essentiel sur la fidélisation des ressources humaines en santé. C'est un, un point que presque tous les pays partagent. Alors, le Zimbabwe euh, prend la parole. Ensuite, le, le Seychelles se prépare. Merci. Thank you, Chair. Zimbabwe commence the Secretariat for the framework before this committee. The challenges that we devil the region in this area cannot be overemphasized. We are clear on the reality that in order to embrace the aspirations of the SDGs in the quest to attain the universal health coverage, there is need to have a knowledgeable, skilled, adequate, and motivated health workforce. Given the aforementioned aspirations, it is important to look at the role and place of community health workers. We need to establish strong and motivated community health workers, community health nurses, and midwives. To this effect, Zimbabwe has gone a long way in strengthening its workforce by doing inter alia the following. Reviewing the midwifery training program to incorporate the International Confederation of Midwives' seven essential competencies. Finalizing the human resources for health policy, while well, the workload indicator of staffing needs survey is near completion. Institutionalizing clinical mentorship to enhance the competencies of all healthcare clinicians and offering fellowships for public health and other basic courses universally to all human resources for health for free. The foregoing notwithstanding, brain drain continues to be the major challenge to our retention of the health workforce. In this regard, we wish to underscore the importance of implementing the WHO Code of Practice on the international recruitment of health personnel. While the usual tendency is to speak about the South-North migration, It is our belief that the region also needs to interrogate South-South migration insofar as the health workforce is concerned. In the SADC region, we are governed by the SADC protocol on health, on the migration of health workers, which other sub-regions and indeed the framework I could learn from. Consistency in implementing such protocols even within the region 
will go a long way in ensuring universal health coverage. Therefore, we support the adoption of the priority interventions and actions proposed in this framework and further call for a regional resolution on nursing and midwifery to give impetus to the SDGs and the universal health coverage. Thank you, Chair. Je remercie. Nous retenons donc la place des agents de santé communautaire dans le système. Seychelles et le Niger se préparent. Merci. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Seychelles fully endorses and supports this strategy as outlined in this document. The shortage of human resources for health is always an acute problem in a small island community. And I would like to take this opportunity here to thank the member states, in particular Zimbabwe and South Africa, that have helped us to train our health professionals. I, I would like to make three points, uh, Madam Chair. Firstly, it is not just a matter of numbers uh, in terms of adding more doctors, more nurses. I think uh, it also relates to when you look at the pattern of disease or health needs, you also need to look at the kind of health workers health professionals that you need. And there comes a time perhaps when adding one more doctor produces less health gains than perhaps adding a nutritionist or, or, or a psychologist to the, the, the health team. The second issue I'd like to raise, second point, is that when we are thinking about human resources for health in the widest sense, we need also to look beyond just the health sector and to look at all the other sectors where there are people who are working towards health development and the attainment of health-related goals. And I'm thinking in particular of social workers, community workers, but more, <coughs> more in particular about teachers. Teachers in school are a powerful resource for health because the school is an important area or important place where with the support of health workers, teachers can play a vital role in improving health of children. And if we take the life course approach, we know that what you do with children at a young age will have long and lasting uh, behavioral change and positive effects on health. And of course, if you focus on schools, that is the recruiting grounds for future health workers. The third point I'd like to make is community health workers. I think they play a vital role. And again, I believe in our situation in Seychelles, although we have a relatively well-developed health system, community health workers could have a very vital role to play. And we need to be creative as to what we label community health workers. Peer educators for young people are community health workers. Carers for elderly people are community health workers. And we need to find ways where we can use the resources of communities to push ahead with our health development. Because health professionals who are trained in the traditional way do not speak the language of young people. They do not necessarily are the best people to mobilize the communities when you need to change lifestyles, when you need to change the way people utilize health services. Thank you, Madam Chair. Merci, Les Seychelles, pour vos propositions de créativité. Le Niger a la parole et le Mozambique se prépare. Merci, Madam la Présidente. Euh, le Niger félicite le secrétariat pour l'inscription de ce point à l'ordre du jour de cette 67e réunion du comité régional. Les États membres des Nations Unies, faut-il le rappeler, se sont engagés à faire en sorte que chacun bénéficie d'une couverture sanitaire universelle, comprenant une protection contre les risques financiers et donnant accès à des services de santé essentiels, de qualité, et à des médicaments et vaccins essentiels sûrs, efficaces, de qualité et d'un coût abordable. C'est une citation. Les défis des ressources humaines 
étant au cœur de la problématique de la couverture sanitaire universelle. Ils entendent accroître considérablement le budget de la santé et le recrutement, le perfectionnement, la formation et le maintien en poste du personnel de santé dès les pays en développement, notamment les pays les moins avancés et les petits états insulaires en développement. Madame la Présidente, le Niger, à l'instar des autres pays en voie de développement, est confronté à la crise des ressources humaines, tant au point de vue qualitatif que quantitatif. Entre 1910 et 2016, le ministère de la Santé publique du Niger a bénéficié d'un recrutement important à la fonction publique, ce qui a permis une augmentation nette de 41% des effectifs globaux, 41% des effectifs des sages-femmes, 68% des effectifs des infirmiers et 174% des effectifs des médecins. Aussi, mon pays a-t-il rendu davantage attractives les fonctions de soins de santé en adoptant en 2012 deux grilles spéciales de traitement pour les médecins et les paramédicaux. À ces grilles s'ajoutent également des primes et indemnités de suggestions, de fonctions, motivation, risque, logement, téléphone, roulage et garde consacrées par deux autres décrets. Madame la Présidente, la réalisation de la couverture sanitaire universelle en 2030 nécessite que soient disponibles les effectifs requis, tout en relevant les défis liés à l'accessibilité, à l'acceptabilité et à la qualité des personnels de santé. Le Niger est connu pour être l'un des pays où le taux de natalité est le plus élevé du monde. Cette croissance démographique engendrera, engendrera sans nul doute, à l'horizon 2030, des besoins additionnels en ressources humaines en santé, estimés à plus de deux tiers des effectifs des médecins, infirmiers et sages-femmes actuellement disponibles. Il s'agit donc là d'un défi réel, mais nous sommes convaincus qu'il ne suffit pas seulement de recruter et d'affecter suffisamment d'agents. Il faut aussi les retenir à leur poste en les fidélisant. Pour donc aller de l'avant, mon pays soutient le cadre de mise en œuvre de la stratégie mondiale sur les ressources humaines pour la santé à l'horizon 2030 et recommande son adoption. Merci Madame la Présidente. Je remercie le Niger pour mettre avant mis un accent sur la qualité des ressources humaines. Le Mozambique a la parole et le Malawi prendra la suite. Muito obrigada, Sra. Presidente. Antes de mais, gostaria de transmitir as saudações de Sua Excelência Ministra de Saúde de Moçambique, que por razões alheias à sua vontade não pode estar presente nesta magna Assembleia. A minha delegação gostaria de afirmar o seu apoio ao quadro de implementação da Estratégia Mundial dos Recursos Humanos de Saúde, com as emendas propostas pelos países que me antecederam. Enfatizando, no entanto, a grande importância dos trabalhadores comunitários de saúde, com metas, pois estes são de crucial importância na promoção de saúde nas comunidades, o que certamente vai contribuir para a cobertura universal de saúde que nós tanto almejamos alcançar. Muito obrigada. Merci Mozambique, le Malawi, ensuite le Ghana prendra la suite. Thank you very much Madam Chair for giving Malawi the floor. Uh, the government of Malawi, with support from its partners, uh, strives to make available adequate numbers of critical professional human resources for health with the right skill mix. 
we've taken notable strides in making sure that uh, we have a constant and steady supply of HR. Uh, but obviously, uh, problems still exist and challenges still exist in terms of numbers and distribution of these health workers. We just recently launched uh, a community health strategy and that is in the last two months. And uh, the community health workers are critical to the implementation of this uh, strategy and also, of course, universal health coverage. Most of these community w health workers uh, come from the communities they serve. And for us to achieve uh, health for all, for all, in all of Africa, uh, this is a critical cadre that we need to embrace. And I'm glad that the document uh, has a section that's uh, looking at this and also retention. Malawi fully supports the strategy as outlined in this document. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Merci beaucoup, Malawi. Donc, euh, le Ghana a la parole. Et après le Ghana, ce sera donc la Côte d'Ivoire. Is it Ghana or Malawi? Ghana, merci. Le Ghana. Merci. Madam Chair, the delegation of Ghana once again welcomes the report of the Secretariat on this very important subject and commends them for the comprehensive data on health workforce presented in the document. Ghana has made some remarkable strides in the development of health workforce over the decades. We currently have five public medical training schools that we call teaching hospitals and two private teaching hospitals. These are supported by about 85 accredited public nursing and allied health training institutions. We still also have some private um, institutions that are training nurses. We can boast of a substantial skill mix of middle level health workforce with a reasonable distribution across our country. The case is, however, not the same for medical doctors, whose distribution tends to be saturated in the capital and serving parts of the country. But, but plans are in place to ensure equity in the deployment of all trained health workers. Sadly, though, some of our trained doctors are only trained for the West, and they leave our country to go elsewhere for better remuneration. The last batch of medical officers we interviewed and tried to post, those who had been inducted, as many as 28 of them did not even turn up for interview for us to utilize their services for the first time after their husbandship. The challenge of deployment and inequities adversely affects the health delivery system in rural areas. While we have substantial workforce in nursing, we are continually challenged by the recruitment of nurses and other allied health workers because government is the largest employer and lacks the fiscal space to support the large number of this kind of workforce qualifying from our health training institutions. Ghana has embarked on the community-based health planning and services program and has increased the training of community health nurses to provide basic health services in the communities. The community health nurses are assisted by trained community health volunteers from the various communities in the areas of disease surveillance and health promotion. We are also taking advantage of ICT to improve data collection and service delivery at the community level through the use of smartphones and tablets. The Public Service Commission of Ghana has also introduced a human resource information management system for quality data collection, human resource management, and management of remuneration of public health workers. Madam Chair, Allow me to provide a few, a brief comment on the framework 
as has been presented. The original framework for the implementation of the global strategy on human resources for health gives the impression that the African region only needs trained doctors and nurses. However, you will bear with me that most of health delivery system is heavily supported by community health workers. Ghana believes that a framework tackling health workforce in the African region should be comprehensive and holistic to address every aspect of the health needs of our people. And in fact, when we talk about immunization in our country, quite a number of this is done by community health workers in the very, very, very rural areas, very hard to reach areas in our country under supervision by a few um, higher level um, nursing staff. In this vein, we will need to include clear language, in clear language, the need for surgical workforce, emergency health workforce, health promotion offices, paramedics, orthotics, dental nurses, dental therapists, speech and occupational health therapists, and a whole lot more. These are specializations we cannot run away from. Madam Chair, with these few comments, Ghana supports the adoption of the African Regional Framework for the implementation of the Global Strategy on Human Resources for Health, Workforce 2030. Except that the framework must be reviewed or looked at again to address the issue of community health workforce and the issue of the global um, thinking of um, 2 million um, health, community health nurses to be recruited to do what we have to do to achieve universal health care. Thank you very much. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Merci, Madame la Présidente. La Côte d'Ivoire a marqué son adhésion à la vision de stimuler la croissance économique par la création d'emplois dans le secteur de la santé et du social. Par l'organisation de deux importantes consultations francophones, notamment la consultation intersectorielle francophone en 2016 à Abidjan, et la consultation des ministres en charge de la santé et de l'emploi de l'espace UMOA portant sur la création d'emplois dans le secteur de la santé et du social en vue d'assurer une croissance plus inclusive en 2017. En ce qui concerne l'amélioration de la situation proprement dite des ressources humaines pour la santé en Côte d'Ivoire, quelques actions sont entreprises pour la réalisation des objectifs de la stratégie mondiale. Mais beaucoup reste à faire. Au titre de l'objectif 1, plusieurs études pour répondre aux besoins de planification stratégique en ressources humaines en santé du pays, basées sur l'évidence, sont en cours. Il s'agit de l'évaluation du plan intérimaire 2014-2015, de l'étude de la dynamique du marché du travail des personnels de santé en Côte d'Ivoire, de l'étude de la charge de travail et de la définition des normes en ressources humaines de santé dans les établissements de premier contact. Concernant l'objectif de un plan de recrutement couvrant la période 2014-2022 pour combler l'insuffisance de l'offre des ressources humaines qualifiées à porter la densité du personnel de santé médecins, infirmiers, sages-femmes à 0,94 en 2016. Les nouveaux recrutements d'agents de santé ont porté les normes du personnel de santé par population en 2016 à un médecin pour 5300 habitants, un infirmier pour 1932 habitants une sage femme pour 995 femmes en âge de procréer. Je dois dire que les plus jeunes de ces sages femmes sont assistées, sont souvent encadrées par des sages femmes mentors. 
Les recrutements de 3 295 agents de santé prévus au titre de l'année 97, dont 350 médecins généralistes et médecins internistes, 1100 infirmiers diplômés d'État et 760 sages-femmes permettront d'améliorer substantiellement la densité des personnes de santé. Pour ce qui est de l'objectif 3, l'article 6 du décret du 3 août 2016, portant organisation du ministère de la Santé et de l'hygiène publique, définit les missions de la direction des ressources humaines. Enfin, concernant l'objectif 4, un système informatique de gestion des ressources humaines de santé intégrant les fonctionnalités d'IHRIS, Human Resource Information System, et du DHS2, utilisé par les systèmes d'information sanitaire, le système intégré de gestion des fonctionnaires et des agents de l'État, au regard des besoins d'information intersectorielle sur les ressources humaines pour la santé, est en projet. En somme, la Côte d'Ivoire adhère au présent cadre de mise en œuvre de la stratégie mondiale sur les ressources humaines pour la santé à l'horizon 2030 dans la région africaine et soutient les interventions et actions prioritaires du comité. Madame la Présidente, merci d'avoir donné la parole à la Côte d'Ivoire. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie. La Guinée prend la parole et le Lesotho juste après la Guinée. Merci, Madame la Présidente. La Guinée également félicite le secrétariat pour la qualité du document proposé, surtout pour la, la richesse de son contenu et sa présentation. <coughs> Madame la Présidente, comme nous l'avons dit plus tôt, le développement des ressources humaines de santé dans le cadre du renforcement du système de santé passe par le développement et la mise en œuvre d'un programme de santé communautaire. Aujourd'hui, il y a beaucoup de pays qui se sont lancés dans cette approche pour atteindre la couverture sanitaire universelle. C'est le cas de l'Éthiopie, du Rwanda, de Madagascar, de la Guinée, du Ghana, etc. Beaucoup d'autres également. Ces pays sont à différents niveaux, Madame la Présidente. Certains ont un programme mûr, mis en œuvre depuis quelques années. Certains n'ont qu'un document de politique nationale, d'autres un curriculum de formation, etc. Les agents de santé communautaire sont des volontaires dans certains pays, des agents des ONG ou de l'État dans d'autres. C'est ainsi que, Madame la Présidente, je voudrais revenir sur l'initiative jointe de l'ONU-SIDA et désormais de l'Union africaine, car déjà présentée au chef d'État des États membres de l'Union africaine. Cette initiative nous permettra, euh, Madame la Présidente, c'est l'initiative de d'engager de, 2 millions d'agents de, de santé communautaire, donc qui nous permettra d'apprendre euh, les uns des autres, profiter des leçons apprises et éviter les erreurs, d'harmoniser les pratiques et profiter des outils déjà développés par certains pays. C'est ainsi que, Madame la Présidente, en tant que pays président en exercice de l'Union africaine, et avec votre permission, nous recommandons un point de décision voir une résolution de l'OMS afro sur ce sujet. Et je me propose de vous lire la proposition de texte qui est courte et qui pourrait être amendée, Madame la Présidente. The WHO Afro Regional Committee recognizes that community health workers increase uptake of health services, reduce health inequalities, provide a high quality of services and improve overall health outcomes. Community health worker programs also provide employment, bolster national and local economies, and increase productivity by improving health and well-being, thus contributing to the realization of the SDGs. The regional committee welcomes the African Union-led initiative to create two million community health care workers by 2020 with the aim of ending AIDS, TB, malaria, and lay the foundation for sustainable health systems. 
The regional committee urges WHO to align its human resources for health programs with the African Union Initiative and to work with the African Union Commission, UNAIDS, and other relevant partners to operationalize and implement the 2 million community healthcare workers initiative. The regional committee further asks WHO to collaborate with relevant partners to monitor progress on the 2 million community health workers initiative and provide an update report in the AU summits. Pour rappel, Madame la Présidente, euh, cette initiative a été présentée le 3 juillet euh, au sommet donc, des chefs d'État euh, à Addis Abeba. Et les chefs d'État des, des pays membres de l'Union africaine sont parfaitement au courant de, de cette initiative donc, qui est portée par le, le, le président en exercice de l'Union africaine. Donc, avec votre permission, nous voudrons vraiment euh, appuyer cette initiative et recommander cette euh, résolution ou ce point de décision, surtout que euh, tous les commentaires que nous avons entendus jusque-là semblent aller dans ce sens. Je vous remercie. Merci, Monsieur le ministre de la Guinée. Je pense que cette euh, décision pourrait donc être reversée au secrétariat. Euh, je pense qu'ils ont pris acte. Je passe donc la parole aux Lesotho, puis l'Ouganda après. Thank you, Chair. The Kingdom of Lesotho congratulates the Secretariat for the report highlighting the critical needs for human resources, for health, and the challenges faced by our region in retaining health cadres for different levels of care and specialized services. Indeed, my country is among countries that struggle to sustain the critical and specialized human resources needed, particularly in the treatment of various conditions. With all this, Chair, as a country, we believe prevention is key and essential. The closer health services are to the community, the much better impact. As a result, the most critical level of service delivery which is community level, needs human resources, which is not only closer to the communities, but more socially and culturally acceptable. Hence, there is need to include community health workers within human resources for health cadets. Community health workers are community representatives and are chosen by the communities who they are serving with trust. My country has been pioneering the use of community health workers as volunteers for implementation of essential health, health care package using primary health care strategy. There have been great achievements in areas of immunization, growth, monitoring, and control of communicable diseases of HIV and AIDS and TB, among others. As a region, we again face the, the increasing incidences of non-communicable diseases and through their involvement, screening and timely diagnosis can be achieved. Chair, I strongly believe that as a region, we need human resources that is not only sustainable, but that also responds to both the social and cultural needs of our communities. I therefore recommend that the framework, the framework include community health workers as part of human resources for health as endorsed by EU heads of states and governments. And governments. In conclusion, Chair, the Kingdom of Lesotho supports this World Health Organization framework and its implementation. Thank you. Merci, le Lesotho. L'Ouganda a la parole, suivi après de la Tanzanie. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair Uganda thanks the Secretariat for this very elaborate report. 
and we also note that the human resources for health crisis in many of our countries will severely limit achievement of the SDGs for the region. Uganda, for example, has 1.49 health workers per 1,000 population, well below the 2.3 workers per 1,000 recommended by WHO. The strategy clearly states that there has been a general increase in the total number of doctors, nurses, and midwives in more than half of the member states, but in terms of density of the health workers, only 23% have reached the minimum threshold. Chair, as members know, 24% of the world's disease burden is in Africa. And it's a problem for us to note that 70% of our disease burden can actually be preventable. And this calls for a need to invest in the community health workers, as mentioned by the previous speakers, to be able to link healthcare services to the community and thus achieve the health benefits from prevention. A lot has been said about the primary health care. I will not talk about that. And the Wagadugu Declaration, this was the Almata Declaration of 1978. But the other challenge here, which I really want to bring out is for us to address is that of the quality of health workers who, because we may not have systems to track them, who migrate to other countries to provide services there. And you know that an ill-trained health worker can cause serious um, problems to individuals, including death. So Chair, we need to strengthen our regulatory authorities and develop a network within Africa to track the professional certifications across our boundaries. Another suboptimal focus has been given by many of our countries to the way we incentivize the health workers so as to attract and retain them. It is difficult to extract optimal productivity out of the scarce health workforce if incentive alignment is not favorable and priority must be given to this area. Despite the UN Secretary General's High Level Commission on Health, Employment and Economic Growth report in September 2016 on the health employment titled Working for Health and Growth, Investing in the Health Workforce, which recognized that investing in the health workforce employment opportunities may also add broader socioeconomic value to the economy and also contribute to the implementation of the SDGs. This has not led to the deliberate, sincere discussions on structuring health workforce within our countries. Chair, I also want to raise an issue on the task shifting, which I know that could make a great difference in our countries. We've talked about the community health extension workers who are village health teams in my country, but as Africa, we need to also embrace this. I know sometimes there are challenges of recognitions, but this to me would make a great difference. And in my country, of course, during this challenge of the HIV AIDS and other challenges that we've had, we've had to embrace this in order to really move forward. And of course, this task shifting would go a great way, a great mile in dealing with shortages, especially in our communities. I want Chair to raise another area that I know may be also very controversial. But we know that in our countries, because of the poor health systems, the poor health care, you find that the majority of the population live in the villages. They live in the rural areas, and access to health facilities is a challenge. So most of our people, actually use the traditional medicines. And this is an area that has remained unregulated. Uganda as a country, we are aware that uh, these indigenous medicines do exist, and we are now coming up with the, the indigenous and complementary medicines bill, which will be enacted into law, so as to regulate this area. And of course, uh, this is something uh, that other countries also need 
to tackle. We need to support research in this area, which we are already doing, in addition to the regulation. Share with those few remarks. Uganda supports uh, the adoption of this report with those adjustments. Thank you. Merci, Madame la Ministre. Donc, nous passons la parole à la Tanzanie et le Nigeria suivra. Merci. Madam Chairperson, Tanzania welcomes the Global Strategy on Human Resources for Health, Workforce 2030, which aims at ensuring equitable access to qualified health workers. And this is critical as countries accelerate progress towards achieving universal health coverage and sustainable development goal number three. Madam Chairperson, <laughs> Tanzania, like many other developing countries, faces severe shortage of human resources for health. Various efforts have been put in place, including an aim to attain 100% balanced distribution of available skilled health workers at the primary level. There are six distinctive human resources for health initiatives which have been given priority by the United Republic of Tanzania. And these include prioritizing allocation of employment permits to regions with critical shortage of skilled human resources for health, provision of skilled human resources for health through public-private partnership, private sector engagement, redistribution of health workers within regions, and optimizing the pool of new recruits. Also empowering the local government authorities in human resource management and the synchronizing the recruitment process at the center level. Progress has been made also in institutionalizing a sustainable community health workforce. In Tanzania, community health workers are now integrated into the formal health system and can be recruited by the government but also partners. This is in line with the implementation of the AU initiative for the 2 million community health workers, an, in an initiative uh, we believe will contribute to the strengthening of this important aspect of the health workforce for our region. We therefore urge member states and the WHO Afro to further emphasize on the operationalization of the community health workers concept. Madam Chairperson, this strategy has clearly outlined various actions, including, est including establishing an investment case for human resource for health as a vital component of the sustainable development goals and also universal health coverage. What is required now is strong advocacy for human resource for health and a need for supporting ministries of health to engage other sectors towards greater and adequate investment in the health se sector. We ask the Secretariat, therefore, to continue its normative and international coordinating role to ensure that all international agencies, non-state actors, and the other development partners supporting human resource for health efforts align their efforts to common frameworks supportive of country needs and plans. With these few remarks, Madam Chairperson, Tanzania endorses the framework with its proposed actions. We want to thank you very much. Je vous remercie donc euh, la Tanzanie. Le Nigeria a la parole. Madam Chairman, I want to join all the others who have uh, expressed appreciation for this very important document that is supposed to guide countries of the region in developing the adequate human resource or health that they require. I want to first of all observe under paragraph 15 that I think we should begin to look at the deleterious effect of uh, losing highly trained and highly skilled workforce through migration to developed countries. A highly skilled, to train a highly skilled medical person, a doctor, costs a lot of money, goes into the uh, many thousands, hundreds of thousands. Uh, and uh, we in Africa do that training at great expense to ourselves and lose the service of such workers. Uh, we are indirectly actually subsidizing the developed countries. I believe we should begin to look at the deleterious effect on our own system. Regarding governance, leadership, 
and multisectoralist response to the human resource or health challenges. Nigeria recently, uh, at the National Human Resource Conference, reaffirmed the need to further strengthen and formally inaugurate the National Health Workforce Observatories. The National Human Resource for Health Conference was organized to create increased awareness of the scope and importance of human resource for health among stakeholders and actors at national and state level and direct specific course of action that impacts on healthcare delivery with emphasis on human resource health information systems. The theme of our conference was strengthening human resources for health towards revitalization of functional primary health care in Nigeria. And it focused on the current government's agenda on universal health coverage, which sees the revitalization of nearly 10,000 primary health care centers across Nigeria, for which trained health workforce is critical to ensure functionality. Particularly critical here has been, as, a, as has been uh, severally emphasized are the community health workers uh, who we in, uh, want to recruit from the communities themselves and train to work in the areas where they are known and where they are familiar. Nigeria has reviewed its human resource for health policy and the plan and created a 2016-2020 uh, document with the support from development partners in order to mobilize additional internal and external resources to increase implementation rates of the nation's human resource plans. This is being done in line with WHO roadmap. On the development and implementation framework of the global strategy on human resource for health to address shortages uh, towards UHC and sustainable development goals, Nigeria in collaboration with WHO and other partners uh, has assisted health institution, uh, health training institutions to gain accreditation to produce more frontline health care workers to bridge the shortage. While the production of human resources for health is inadequate to meet the country's needs, Nigeria is one of those particularly affected by, by migration of uh, highly skilled health workers. Among highly specialized uh, doctors with tertiary degrees, qualifications, about half of all Nigeria has trained are outside of the country. And while almost nothing can be done to stop this highly skilled workforce migration, the consequence for the country itself, uh, the, the consequence that the country is left worse off, being unable to satisfy its needs for basic healthcare workers on the one hand and for highly skilled health workers on the other hand. We understand that this is not peculiar to Nigeria, but poses certain problems for those of us in the African region. Uh, the migration issues can be handled in such a way that originating countries benefit from their investment in their own health workforce from the beneficiary countries, in that uh, they provide, and, and while we, on our own side, continue to work to provide more conducive environment for our, to retain our healthcare workers. In addressing this, Nigeria recently developed a migration policy for health workforce. Nigerian government has also made efforts to encourage, to encourage retention and discourage migration of health workforce by creating the special salary scale for health workers. Madam uh, Chair Ban, Madam Chair Person, Nigeria adopts the African Regional Framework for the implementation of the Global Strategy for Human Resources for Health Workforce 2030. Thank you. Le Nigeria. Le Nigeria est donc uh, le dernier pays qui a souhaité uh, intervenir. Et donc, uh, juste une information avant de passer la parole au Dr. Deblo. En ce qui concerne donc le projet de résolution proposé donc uh, par la Guinée. Euh, le vendredi, donc avant bien sûr qu'on puisse clore, euh, le secrétariat euh, verra si c'est possible de le valider et de l'inclure dans euh, les dernières résolutions. Je, donc,
donc passer la parole donc, au docteur de Vlo pour euh, ses commentaires et éventuellement euh, ce qu'il souhaite euh, retenir des, des, des interventions des différents euh, délégués. Vous avez la parole, docteur de Vlo. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Chairperson. And uh, I would again like to thank uh, member states, ministers, delegates for their interventions, advice, the review of the document, and the suggestions that have been made so far. And to comment on a few of the items raised uh, as follows. Uh, there's clearly been a universal commentary on the issue of uh, community health workers, and I would like to refer members to page 5, paragraph 21 of the document which is in objective one of the framework. Uh, and paragraph 21 is about the scaling up and or improving the effectiveness of community health workers programs. Member states should, when deploying large scale community health programs in deprived regions, provide promotive, preventive, defined curative health care services consistent with national regulations and needs. CHWs should be integrated into the health system, and member states should consider providing them with financial compensation. Evidence-based assessment should be conducted on the role of CHWs. Uh, and so we do have uh, a comment and an intervention on community health workers within the document and within the framework. Furthermore, in the Africa region, we have this year produced uh, this document, which is a community health worker programs in the Africa region, e evidence and options, uh, which will try and make available, uh, we shall make the link available uh, to, to all member states, and it provides advice on how member states can integrate community health workers into their programs. In addition, Currently, there's a group working at the WHO HQ, hoping to come out with a detailed pro, uh, document and strategy on community health workers uh, at a global level. Uh, I think the target is uh, January, February 2018, when their work will be completed. And this is just to illustrate the number of different areas of work that we are doing on the community health workforce. We consider it a very important part of what we are doing, and we, uh, we recognize the concerns and the interest that member states have expressed uh, in this. A number of other areas have been raised that uh, uh, clearly help. We've noted issues of maybe expanding in the country support, for example, in areas of training. We notice the advice given around making our health worker types more responsive to our needs and social context, going beyond doctors, nurses, and midwives to other elements and resources within countries and communities, such as social workers and teachers, but also the value we should place on task shifting so that we can spread the burden and get uh, a, a, a broader spectrum of work uh, done. Um, we take note of a proposed uh, resolution uh, uh, from the AU summit and, and uh, 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 the EU saw in the UNAIDS uh, meeting that has been mentioned and would work together to see how we can best uh, uh, frame that to reflect the issues we have put into the, the, the framework, but also to take this forward in practical terms in the region. We do recognize uh, the different contexts within countries and how they apply different types of health workforce. And so that's going to be important. The point was made also around the professional regulatory and certification processes within countries and also the possibility of harmonization within the region. And we have discussed earlier and again this afternoon the Commission on Health Employment and uh, Economic Growth and the recommendations that they have made which is part of what has been applied in the global strategy for which we have developed this framework. I also take note of the comment on traditional health workers, uh, 
which we have not really tried to analyze and understand, and that could be something we need to take for it uh, seriously. And to end, uh, uh, we take note of, through various commentary and suggestions, the fact that we need to develop in countries and to provide a guidance for it, strengthen human resource for health information systems that allow us to monitor and understand how well we are deploying this essential resource for reaching universal health coverage. And with that, Madam Chairman, I thank uh, the member states and yourself for the guidance that we have received. Thank you very much. Merci, Dr. Deblot, pour donc la prise en compte des différents commentaires et observations qui ont été faites par euh, les distingués délégués. Pouvons-nous donc considérer que le comité régional est disposé euh, à adopter les interventions et actions prioritaires proposées dans le document euh, RC 67-11, intitulé « Cadre régional de mise en œuvre de la stratégie mondiale sur les ressources humaines pour la santé à l'horizon 2030 » en tenant compte, bien sûr, des observations faites. Question que je vous pose. Vous pouvez applaudir, hein, ça me suffit largement. Il est ainsi décidé, les interventions et actions prioritaires proposées sont donc adoptées. Je vous remercie. C'est quelque chose que je, je fais souvent, donc je viens d'être appelé. Je pense que nous allons nous lever deux minutes, hein, parce que si on doit aller jusqu'à 20 heures, on va juste se lever tous, on va faire quelques, quelques petits mouvements. Il faut faire la promotion de la santé, se dégourdir un peu. Et puis, nous, chez nous, en Côte d'Ivoire, on appelle ça « ma santé, ma vie ».« Ma santé, ma vie », ça veut dire « je me porte bien, donc je vais vivre longtemps ». Donc, on se lève tous deux minutes, on va faire quelques petits exercices. Alors, je vais vous montrer juste un petit exercice qu'on fait. C'est, alors, tenez-vous bien, on va se marrer en même temps, mais on fait comme ça. Alors, on fait le chiffre 1. À 1, c'est comme ça et comme ça, d'accord On fait. Voilà. Donc, allez, on fait 1, 1. Voilà. Voilà, donc ça, ça débloque un peu ici. Alors, le 2, c'est le chiffre 2. Tout, on fait comme ça. Voilà. Alors, donc, on fait deux et deux. Alors, le trois, c'est comme ça. Alors, le trois, c'est comme ça et comme ça. <rire> Allez, on y va. Trois, trois. Okay. Comme ça et comme ça. Voilà. Le quatre, c'est simple. Le quatre, c'est comme ça, comme ça. On est d'accord Et comme ça. Donc, c'est comme ça, comme ça. Et comme ça. <rire> Allez, on refait le 4 fois. Voilà. Uh -huh. Comme ça, uh -huh. comme ça, et comme ça. Donc ça fait 4. Alors le plus compliqué, c'est 5. Le 5, c'est comme ça, comme ça, comme ça, comme ça. On est d'accord Donc comme ça, comme ça, comme ça. Vous voyez, ça fait du bien, hein Ça fait, ça, ça développe. Alors, le but, c'est le 6. On va faire le 6 et puis on, et puis on, on va arriver jusqu'à 8. On fait le 6. Alors c'est comme ça. Allez, on reprend le 6. Comme ça. Et le 7, comme ça. Alors, comme ça, comme ça, comme ça et comme ça. <rire> Allez, on reprend 7, comme ça, là-bas et le trait. <rire> Et on finit avec le 8. Alors, le 8, ça va tout débloquer. Alors, et, euh, 8, 8, tout le monde sait faire le 8. Alors, on fait comme ça, comme ça et comme ça. <rire> Allez, on reprend le 8. Comme ça, comme ça et comme ça. 
Maintenant qu'on a débloqué les jambes, les reins, les bras, le cou et tout, on va passer maintenant au point 15 de l'ordre du jour, plus particulièrement par l'examen du document AFR RC 67 12, intitulé « Cadre régional pour l'intégration des services essentiels de lutte » contre les maladies non transmissibles dans les soins de santé primaire. J'invite donc le docteur Steven Chongui, Chongui, directeur par intérim du groupe organique maladies non transmissibles, à nous présenter son document. Docteur Steven Chongui, vous avez la parole. Thank you very much. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Ministers, Regional Director, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the Secretariat, I have the privilege to introduce document AFRRC 67-12, entitled Regional Framework for Introducing Essential Non-Communicable Disease Service in primary health care. The purpose of the document is to provide guidance to member states on the integration of essential NCD interventions in primary health care in order to scale up prevention, early diagnosis, early detection, diagnosis, treatment, uh, and prevention of complications of NCDs. I would like now to highlight a few key issues uh, that are raised in the document. Non-communicable diseases, namely cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, and chronic respiratory disease are the leading causes of death worldwide, including in developing countries. NCDs are largely preventable by addressing the four common modifiable risk factors, tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diet, and physical inactivity. I'm delighted, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that you took us through some physical activity. Um, the high burden of NCDs is due to an aging population, urbanization, and use of harmful products such as tobacco, alcohol, unhealthy diets, and a sedentary lifestyle. The human, social, and economic impact of NCDs is serious in all countries, but disproportionately devastating in poor and vulnerable populations like ours. In recognizing the high burden of NCDs, leaders both at the global and regional levels, have made commitments to address NCDs. And these include the, the UN Political Declaration of uh, 2011, the WHO Global NCD Action Plan 2013 to 2020, and the UN Outcome Document of 2014. At the regional level, we have the Brazzaville Declaration of uh, 2011, as well as the Luanda commitment of NCDs of 2014, um, as well as uh, various regional committee strategies and resolutions. The main challenges that we face in addressing NCDs include the following. One, inadequate prioritization of NCDs in national development. Um, there is inadequate um, advocacy and guidance on NCDs, particularly at country level. There is insufficient um, number of skilled human resources for health. 
There is also inadequate financial resources for NCDs, both from domestic and external sources. NCDs are not integrated and remain weak, fragmented, and of poor quality. Health information systems uh, remain weak and do not provide accurate and reliable data on the burden of disease. Unfortunately, uh, NCDs tend to be underestimated because of the weak information systems. And also, they do not inform uh, decision making adequately. There is also inadequate access to essential medicines and technologies for diagnosing NCDs in many of our countries. Stockouts are very common in our health facilities, especially in primary healthcare facilities. Um, another concern is the interference of the tobacco, alcohol, and food industry. Um, developing countries are targeted uh, by these industries because of the weak legislation. And sometimes even when there is le legislation, enforcement is a challenge. Um, another concern, another issue is the chronic nature of NCDs. Um, our health systems in most countries are designed for acute short-term care and are not yet responsive to uh, uh, non-communicable diseases. And there is also limited community participation in NCD prevention and care. Um, NCDs are still seen largely as a health sector issue. And, and unfortunately, that limits the involvement of other sectors and the communities. Um, there is also um, a challenge with regard to uh, uh, rehabilitative and palliative care. There is limited access uh, as a result of um, uh, lack of um, simple tools uh, in this regard, but also uh, skilled human resources and even some of the medicines that are required uh, and other devices. To address these challenges, WHO has developed a, a number of tools. Some of them are population-wide strategies and policies that member states can adapt uh, to address the risk factors of NCDs that I've already mentioned, and including tobacco use, we have tools, alcohol, diet, and physical inactivity. We also have, at another level, individual healthcare strategies for preventing and managing non-communicable diseases. Honorable Chair, Honorable Ministers, let me mention at the outset that this framework that we are presenting addresses the healthcare or the management of NCDs at primary healthcare level. They, we have the WHO package of essential interventions for primary healthcare in low resource settings, what we commonly refer to as the HUPEN, which is a prioritized set of cost-effective interventions for integration of essential NCD services at primary healthcare level. We do have other packages that have been developed recently, like what we call Global Heart uh, Package, which is being piloted in Ethiopia and Uganda. But it is really even the, the Global Heart uh, is intended to implement the HUPEN, but focusing mainly on, cardio or on the prevention of heart attacks and stroke. Now, as I've already mentioned, the regional framework intends to support member states in scaling up 
early detection, diagnosis, treatment and prevention of NCDs and their complications through integration of services at primary health care level. Um, the guiding principles include the following, the government leadership, universal health coverage, and evidence-based approaches and cost-effective interventions, patient-centered and community-based approaches to address NCDs. Um, the use of uh, updated and friendly tools that uh, health workers in primary health care facilities can use. And uh, also public-private collaboration or uh, partnership. Now, the framework proposes priority interventions and actions, which include the following. The one, advocacy for, for political commitment to utilize the WHO guidance documents to integrate and scale up NCD services. We have, we are suggesting some steps that uh, member states can consider and all that is provided in the document. We propose improving or strengthening human resources for health, including improving knowledge and skills of health workers. This also includes task shifting and task sharing. We propose that uh, member states ensure the availability of uh, simple guidelines and protocols for prevention and management of NCDs at primary health care level by adapting the already available tools that WHO has developed. And another action is improving the availability of medicines and technology for diagnosis of NCDs in primary health care facilities. And strengthening technical leadership in, uh, of the primary health care facilities uh, strengthening surveillance and information systems and promoting community participation. <laughs> Honorable Chair, I would also like to mention that under strengthening community, uh, uh, strengthening human resources for health, we strongly advocate the training of community health workers and their involvement in non-communicable diseases. Um, the final action, uh, but of course the list is not exhaustive, the details are in the, in the document. Integration, we also recommend strongly integration of NCDs with HIV, reproductive health, adolescent health, and other services that are already being provided. Um, Honorable Chair, the Regional Committee is invited to examine and adopt the priority interventions and actions proposed in this fr framework. I thank you very much. Je vous remercie, Dr. Steven Shangwe. Je vais donc demander à nos distingués délégués, après avoir donc fait en sorte de déloigner les maladies non transmissibles par quelques mouvements, quels sont les pays donc qui veulent intervenir Nous prenons la liste. Alors, je vois ici, d'accord, Algérie, ensuite Burundi, Congo, je ne vois pas très bien. Après, si on peut m'aider. Ah, Côte d'Ivoire, carrément, oui. Zim, Zambia, euh, Zambia, d'accord. Éthiopie, Zambie, Cap, 
Cap-Vauverde. Malawi. Congo, je crois. Ah, c'est déjà fait. Ensuite, au fond, là-bas. Guinée. Guinée. Ghana. Togo, c'est ça. Afrique du Sud. Namibie. Euh, Seychelles. Oui, Seychelles. Oui. Sénégal. Ensuite, au fond, Mo Maurice. D'accord. Ensuite, Botswana qui vient de lever. Botswana. Et au fond, je ne vois pas bien. Tout autour. Oui. C'est fini. Hein? Tout autour. Côté bon. Non, c'est déjà fait. Donc, il y a, y a l'Ouganda qui vient de lever. C'est ça. Tanzanie. Ah, les autos. Ouganda. Donc je vais reprendre. Alors nous avons noté l'Algérie, Burundi, Congo, Côte d'Ivoire, Éthiopie, Zambie, Cap Vert, Malawi, Guinée, Ghana, Togo, Afrique du Sud, Namibie, Seychelles, Sénégal, Maurice, Botswana, Tanzanie, Lesotho, Ouganda. Est-ce qu'il y a un pays que je n'ai pas pu noter Une question de visibilité, je ne sais pas. Est-ce que le Cameroun a levé Non Oui, Congo, je l'ai. Très bien. Donc, nous allons commencer euh, par l'Algérie. Algérie, vous avez la parole. Après l'Algérie, ce sera le Burundi. Madame la Présidente, Madame la Directrice régionale, Honorable Ministre et Délégué, l'Algérie, tout d'abord tient à réaffirmer son engagement à poursuivre la mise en œuvre de la résolution sur le suivi de la déclaration politique de la réunion de haut niveau de l'Assemblée générale, pourtant sur la prévention et la maîtrise des maladies non transmissibles et la mise en œuvre du plan d'action mondial de l'OMS pour la lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles 2013-2020. Nous tenons à rappeler que notre région se trouve dans une situation particulière marquée par le double fardeau des maladies transmissibles et des maladies non transmissibles, avec pour conséquence une charge de plus en plus importante, difficilement supportable, car appuyée par les seuls budgets nationaux. Répondre aux menaces causées par les maladies non transmissibles et de leurs facteurs de risque à travers l'élaboration de politiques globales basées sur des stratégies et des plans d'action en tenant compte des actions suivantes. Assurer la prévention et le contrôle des MNT et veiller à ce que les facteurs de risque bénéficient de toute l'attention nécessaire. Assurer pleinement la mise en œuvre du plan d'action mondial de l'OMS 2013-2020 et ce grâce à des plans nationaux ce qui est déjà le cas pour l'Algérie qui dispose d'un plan national multisectoriel de lutte co intégrée contre les facteurs de risque pour la période 2014-2018. Protéger les politiques de santé publique contre toute ingérence et les intérêts des industries de l'alcool, du tabac et des produits alimentaires grâce à une législation complète et rigoureuse. Aussi, et en ce qui concerne les choix, le choix des interventions, nous considérons comme essentiel la prise en compte des capacités de mise en œuvre et de la faisabilité en fonction des circonstances nationales, ce qui nécessite pour nos pays un appui technique et financier de l'OMS conséquent. L'Algérie soutient ce rapport et s'inscrit dans les axes des actions et d'interventions proposées dans ce rapport. Et je vous remercie. Je remercie l'Algérie, le Burundi suivi après par le Congo. Merci de me passer la parole. Le gouvernement du Burundi félicite le secrétariat pour la qualité du document qui nous a été présenté. S'agissant de l'axe 2 en rapport avec le plan d'action mondial pour la lutte contre les MNT, la mise en place de ce cadre de suivi poursuit en but de sensibilisation et vise à renforcer l'engagement politique 
en faveur d'une action mondiale coordonnée pour lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles. Les indicateurs proposés pour l'atteinte de neuf cibles volontaires permettront une auto-évaluation, mais également une évaluation comparable au niveau mondial de l'évolution des tendances des maladies non transmissibles et contribuera à évaluer un pays déterminé par rapport aux autres pays de la même région ou aux pays ayant atteint le même niveau de développement. Conformément à la mise en œuvre des stratégies et des plans d'action, notre pays, le Burundi, a élaboré un document sur les indicateurs de suivi des maladies chroniques qui ont été définis conformément au cadre mondial de suivi des maladies non transmissibles. Des démarches pour mettre en place un plan multisectoriel de lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles sont en cours et là, le Burundi demande à l'OMS l'accompagnement technique et financier. Le gouvernement du Burundi soutient cette résolution tout en espérant que les différentes interventions réalisables permettront de réduire considérablement le poids des maladies non transmissibles ainsi que les facteurs de risque. Je vous remercie. Merci le Burundi. Le Congo a la parole, suivi de la Côte d'Ivoire. Merci Madame la Présidente. Les maladies non transmissibles constituent, comme les précédents l'ont dit, un lourd fardeau pour nos pays en transition épidémiologique et constituent désormais, malheureusement, dans les hôpitaux congolais, la première cause de mortalité dans les services des urgences. Il faut noter que le Congo avait élaboré un plan national de lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles pour la période 2012-2016 qui a connu des succès certes modestes. Dans nos pays confrontés donc à l'insuffisance des ressources, dans ces plans, avec l'appui de Diab Action de la Fédération internationale de lutte contre le diabète, nous avons pu donc installer auprès de 22 centres de santé, après formation bien sûr, des centres de dépistage de l'hypertension artérielle et du diabète. Les agents de santé de niveau inférieur ont bien été formés dans le dépistage et surtout dans le suivi de ces deux principales affections. Cependant, nous apprécions à, avec la justesse le cadre régional ainsi présenté par le secrétariat que nous félicitons, étant entendu qu'il vise donc à fournir donc à la communauté aux postes de santé, aux centres de santé et même aux centres de district, les capacités d'assurer ne fût-ce que les activités de promotion de santé, de prévention et de dépistage. Le dépistage d'hypertension artérielle, du diabète, de l'obésité, de l'asthme bronchique sont possibles au sein des formations sanitaires de premier niveau, à condition de recycler et former les agents de santé. Cependant, le dépistage du cancer, des maladies qui touchent le système nerveux, de la drépanocytose et des maladies rénales sont réalisables au niveau des hôpitaux du district ainsi qu'au niveau des structures privées. Nous félicitons donc le secrétariat pour le document fourni qui stipule la nécessité de renforcer la formation, l'équipement des formations sanitaires afin que la nécessaire, afin de rendre nécessaire et disponible la prise en charge et la prévention, la promotion de santé de tout ce qui peut entraîner des complications des maladies non transmissibles qui deviennent de plus en plus lourdes à supporter. Le volet notamment de l'amplification des pôles d'excellence au niveau de nos pays et au niveau des États est un volet important mais qui est très coûteux. C'est la raison pour laquelle nous apprécions à juste titre, encore une fois, le document soumis par le secrétariat qui intègre la lutte des MNT dans les cas de soins de santé primaires et nous appelons les États à adopter ce cadre. Je vous remercie. Je remercie le Congo. Euh, je passe donc la parole à la Côte d'Ivoire et je vais donc dire que comme euh, les délégués sont nombreux à intervenir et si nous voulons vraiment euh, lever la séance euh, à 20h, il faudrait qu'on fasse un petit effort pour réduire un peu pour qu'on puisse rentrer dans le temps. Donc la Côte d'Ivoire, je commence par vous. Merci, Madame la Ministre. Madame la Ministre, la Côte, la Côte d'Ivoire félicite. Madame la Présidente, excusez-moi. Madame la Présidente, la Côte d'Ivoire félicite le secrétariat pour la qualité de ce document. 
À l'instar des autres pays de la sous-région, la Côte d'Ivoire a intégré les services essentiels de lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles dans les soins de santé primaire et encourage le comité régional à prendre en compte toutes ces interventions afin de réduire considérablement l'impact de ces maladies chroniques. Dans le cadre de l'application du PMDS 2016-2020, la Côte d'Ivoire a entrepris diverses actions à titre opérationnel, à savoir la subvention par l'État des traitements médicamenteux des maladies chroniques, la généralisation des kits de soins bucco-dentaires dans les établissements sanitaires publics, la création de 98 établissements de prise en charge de ces affections chroniques, le renforcement du plateau technique pour les spécialités de cardiologie, de néphrologie et de soins bucco-dentaires, l'acquisition d'unités mobiles polyvalentes pour rapprocher les services de santé des populations. Il faut dire qu'au sein de ces unités mobiles sont prodiguées administrer des activités de dépistage et de prise en charge précoce des maladies chroniques en milieu rural surtout. Le protocole national de prise en charge des sujets développant une addiction au tabac et la création d'une unité d'aide au sévrage tabagique depuis 2015. Il est à noter également que depuis 2012, un décret présidentiel a été pris interdisant l'utilisation du tabac dans les lieux publics et les transports en commun. Il y a également l'intégration dans le système national d'information sanitaire des indicateurs de maladies non transmissibles et la reprise des activités de registre de cancer. La Côte d'Ivoire soutient donc cette proposition et plaide pour le financement de ces activités en, en faveur d'une diminution de l'impact de cette maladie non transmissible. Merci Madame la Présidente pour la parole donnée à la Côte d'Ivoire. Merci la Côte d'Ivoire. Je passe donc la parole à l'Éthiopie qui sera suivie de la Zambie. Merci. Thank you, Madam. The Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia congratulates the Secretariat for coming up with this agenda item. Taking into consideration the Government of Ethiopia developed a national non common cover disease strategy 2016 and 2020 as part of the Health Sector Transformation Plan. Ethiopia also noted the importance of integrating essential non common cover disease services at the primary health care level. We are learning and working tirelessly in building country capacity and ownership in responding to the emerging non-communicable diseases which are expected to increase in the fast growing economic life that of Ethiopia. To this end, Ethiopia is intensifying the prevention and control of NECDs through the health extension workers who are engaged in the screening of the community and follow up of patients with non-communicable diseases. Madam Chairperson, equal to strengthening the non-communicable disease care in the primary health care setting, it is important to strengthen the referral linkage and strengthening the curative services. In line with this, we are engaged in the expansion of curative services and currently we are building six nuclear medicine and radiotherapy centers uh, uh, in the country. Renal dialysis and renal transplant centers are also established and it has uh, prevented unnecessary deaths and travel to uh, abroad. The state-of-the-art uh, cardiac center is also under construction. Cancer drugs are uh, provided by subsidized courses. Ethiopia is working with the University of Cape Town and is customizing and piloting PAC primary adult care kit, which is a primary care clinical algorithm, job paid and evidence-based guideline to be implemented in all the primary care facilities in the Ethiopia. The WHO package of essential NCD interventions for primary care, pain, in low resource settings is serving as an important resource material for the NCD content of the guideline. The guideline includes uh, infectious, non-communicable disease, injuries and maternal and child health uh, conditions to be uh, provided in primary care setting. Madam Chair, uh, person, in 2014, the Ethiopian Parliament passed a tobacco control bill which bans smoking in public areas. 
Last week, the Tobacco Free Initiative, one of the WH initiatives, recognized Ethiopian state dry region among World No Tobacco Day 2007 award winners. In conclusion, the government of Federal Republic of Ethiopia adopts this regional framework and urges the Secretariat to provide all necessary support for its implementation. I thank you. Merci l'Éthiopie. Donc la parole est à la Zambie, suivie en, après du Cap Vert. Thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity to comment on this timely agenda. May I pay tribute to the Secretariat for the elaborate and comprehensive framework. Let me mention from the onset that Zambia fully supports this regional framework because like most countries, Zambia has a, a double burden of both communicable and non-communicable diseases. As noted in the framework, there are a number of challenges in the implementation of the strategies, but we also note that these can actually be overcome through advocacy and policy guidelines from the highest level. For instance, in Zambia, the National Health Strategic Plan for 2017 to 2021 has placed emphasis on the shift from the curative hospital-based approach to a primary health care approach with communities as key stakeholders in the health care system. The idea is to keep people healthy in their communities and prevent disease rather than curing them. Zambia's Minister of Health has gone further to create a separate department headed by a director to address issues of, of health promotion, environmental and social determinants of health. In addition, the country is now looking at the possibility of introducing sin tax on non-healthy foods, alcohol, and tobacco, as highlighted by items 12, 14, and 18 in the framework. At the implementation level, we note the limited human resource capacity, the inadequate diagnostics, and the drugs in the management of non-communicable diseases as a major challenge. However, despite all these challenges, we agree, Madam Chair, that integrating NCD services within the primary health care is the way to go. And Zambia has actually revised the basic health care package to include the drugs for some common non-communicable diseases. In conclusion, Chair, the whole package of essential non-communicable disease interventions for primary health care in low resource settings is quite handy and it would assist the scaling up of non-communicable disease services to primary health care. With those few words, Zambia agrees and will adopt the priority interventions and proposed actions in the regional framework. Thank you. Merci, uh, la Zambie. Je passe la parole au Cap Vert. Le Malawi suit le Cap Vert après. Muito obrigada, Sra. Presidente. Muito boa tarde. Uh, senhora Diretor Regional, Srs. Ministros, uh, as doenças crónicas não transmissíveis constituem uma preocupação cada vez mais e um dos grandes problemas de saúde pública no continente africano, sendo já considerado por alguns como uma verdadeira epidemia. Em Cabo Verde, nas, as duas principais causas de mortalidade desde há vários anos são as doenças crónicas não transmissíveis, nomeadamente as doenças cérebro e cardiovasculares e o, o, o cancro. Uh, essa tendência é para aumentar, porque temos vários fatores de risco. A esperança de vida de 74 anos, a hipertensão arterial com uma prevalência de 30, cerca de 35%, a diabetes com uma prevalência de 12,5%, os fatores de risco, uh, o tabaco nem tanto, porque a prevalência é muito baixa do tabagismo, 
nós temos o uso abusivo do álcool, dos mais altos, de, 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 dos países de língua portuguesa, e também os, os maus hábitos alimentares constituem importantes desafios que o país tem estado a enfrentar. No entanto, já existe um plano multissetorial que tem estado a ser implementado um, a nível de atividades de promoção da saúde nas escolas, através do Programa de Saúde Escolar, através do Programa de Saúde do Adolescente. A inatividade física também tem, tem cada vez mais constituído um hábito dos cabo-verdianos com a instalação de vários fitness park em todos os conselhos do país, em várias localidades do país mas uh, a informação e educação para a saúde, a nível do tratamento, a criação de uh, seguimento e tratamento, a criação de protocolos clínicos. Mas, no entanto, uh, há muito ainda a fazer, porque ainda não há um verdadeiro compromisso dos diversos setores envolvidos. Os próprios serviços de saúde estão a aprender a lidar com o doente crônico, com a família do doente crônico e com a sociedade sem contar os custos relacionados com os medicamentos, que são caríssimos, e os próprios tratamentos. Cabo Verde, neste momento, tem o um Centro Nacional de Hemodiálise, que está quase a, a lutar a sua capacidade de tratamento. Uh, tem estado a fazer também a quimioterapia no, 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 nos hospitais. Mas uh, ainda muita falta de recursos humanos e de equipamentos, entre outros. Acreditamos que uh, devemos reforçar realmente a, a ter, a, os cuidados de saúde de primários para o controle e seguimento dos doentes, o diagnóstico de controle, seguimento e tratamento dos doentes crónicos. Mas constrangimentos vários têm sido mostrado, têm sido mostrado cada vez mais difícil, sobretudo a nível de falta de recursos humanos de capacidade e a limitada capacidade de recrutar recursos humanos, tendo em conta uh, 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 o nível econômico do país. Uh, mesmo assim, acreditamos que o quadro apresentado é muito importante. Queremos felicitar, na linha que os outros países fizeram também, o secretariado que colaborou o trabalho e a OMS Afro por ter colocado esse, esse tema na agenda, contando com o apoio da Organização Mundial de Saúde para reduzir uh, o impacto dessas doenças no país. Assim, Cabo Verde apoia a adoção do quadro regional para a integração dos serviços essenciais para as doenças não transmissíveis ao nível dos cuidados de saúde primários. Muito obrigada por me ter dado a palavra. Merci, le Cabo Verde. Nous allons donc passer la parole au Malawi. Et la Guinée se prépare après le Malawi. Merci. Um, thank you very much, Chair, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, indeed, the NCDs and their risk factors constitute a public health problem in Malawi. These diseases as a group are the second leading cause of deaths in adults after HIV and AIDS, and are ranked fourth as a cause of the dis disability adjusted life years. Chair, Malawi included NCDs in the essential health package of the recently uh, launched Health Sector Strategic Plan of 2017 to 2022. We adapted and are using the whole pen in the management of NCDs. Uh, a year ago, we launched a project which is being funded by the World Diabetes Foundation uh, to enhance community mobilization on NCDs and educate patients in health facilities and communities. We have strengthened the capacity of health care providers in managing patients with NCDs as well as health systems through provision of starter packs of essential diagnostic equipment for holistic management. Even our monitoring and evaluation of NCDs in our facilities has been strengthened by the introduction of the patient mastercards. We have uh, recently opened new clinics in the primary health care facilities chair. A year ago, Malawi launched the Lancet Commission with the aim of establishing the baseline of the NCDs data, identifying priority conditions, defining key interventions and costing them, and then guide in policy, advocacy and research. On another note, Chair, uh, just uh, a week ago, Malawi launched its national alcohol policy with the aim of uh, improving the health and social well-being of all Malawians by reducing harmful use of alcohol therefore saving lives and reducing in uncommunicable diseases. I think 
Africa, Malawi is one of the few countries in the southern Africa to have a national alcohol policy. So, Chair, with these remarks as a country, yes, we support the proposed actions in the regional framework. Thank you. Merci au Malawi. Donc, euh, la Guinée a la parole. Suivra donc le Ghana. Juste vous rappeler encore une fois qu'à 50, nous sommes obligés d'arrêter. Merci. Merci, Madame la Présidente. La Guinée remercie le secrétariat pour la qualité du document soumis. Comme noté dans ce document, le nombre de décès imputables aux maladies non transmissibles reste croissant dans tous les pays de la région. En Guinée, les documents de politique et les plans nationaux multisectoriels pour la prévention et la lutte contre les MTN n'ont pas été actualisés depuis 2016. Aussi, l'enquête STEP réalisée en 2009 n'a pas été non plus actualisée. On note une faible couverture sanitaire géographique pour une prise en charge de qualité au niveau de nos formations sanitaires. La loi sur le tabac, sur la lutte contre le tabac a été ratifiée récemment par le président de la République. La Guinée espère qu'avec la mise en œuvre de ce cadre régional, notre pays pourra bénéficier de l'appui du bureau régional pour la mise à jour de ces documents de politique et avoir l'appui nécessaire pour sa mise en œuvre. La Guinée soutient donc le cadre régional pour l'intégration des services essentiels de lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles dans les soins de santé primaires et appelle les pays membres à l'adopter. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup la Guinée. Le Ghana, ensuite, suivra le Togo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ghana again welcomes a report for the sector of the framework for integrating essential and communicable diseases in their services in primary health care. Madam Chair, the integration of essential and communicable disease control services into primary care has been an integral part of the non-communicable disease control program activities in our country. The NCDCP, with support from the World Health Organization, assessed 23 health facilities on their preparedness to implement the WHO package of essential NCDs interventions for primary care in three regions. The assessment focused on the ability of these facilities to screen for common NCDs, human resource availability, availability and logistics. Following the assessment, staff from all facilities in the pilot doses were trained on the WHO package of essential NCDs intervention. Then, the protocols were on prevention of heart attacks, strokes, and kidney diseases, integrated management of diabetes and hypertension, general health education and counseling, specific counseling on cessation of tobacco use, the five steps, five years early detection of cancers, treatment of cancer pain, palliative care. We have also been supported by developing partners to pilot research on the burden of hypertension and heart diseases. Madam Chair, currently Ghana is in the process of reviewing the National Health Promotion Strategic Plan to integrate health promotion and rehabilitation into the health system, especially at the primary health care settings. As policy, wellness clinics will be set up at all health facilities, from CHIPS to teaching hospitals. It is envisaged that this will promote healthy lifestyle, early detection, diagnosis, referral, and management of four NCDs. Madam Chair, specifically, we are looking at introducing two new uh, programs. One we call Dancing for Health, and um, the other one is hiking on our streets over the weekends and during public holidays. More importantly, attention will be placed on cancer management. That is early diagnosis and treatment, including surgical, medical, and radiological therapy. The National Health Insurance is being restructured, and this we are anticipating to cover childhood cancers and other cancers that were previously not covered by the NHIS. Ghana is also in the process of intensifying research into all NCDs, in particular cancers and chronic renal diseases that seem to be on the rise. In conclusion, Madam Chair, Ghana wishes to indicate that the African region will require strong political will to stamp out certain Western trade practices that seem to promote unhealthy lifestyles. 
On this note, we support the adoption of the framework. Chiburu, merci. Si le Ghana, nous passons la parole au Togo et l'Afrique du Sud, Sud suivra. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Le Togo félicite le secrétariat pour la qualité des documents techniques mis à la disposition des délégués. La morbidité et la mortalité liées aux maladies non transmissibles sont à forte croissance dans la région africaine de l'ONS. Les décès prématurés et les conséquences sociales et économiques des maladies non transmissibles appellent à des investissements substantiels et de nouvelles approches aussi bien pour agir sur les facteurs de risque modifiables que sur la prévention secondaire et tertiaire. Pour faire court, nous pensons qu'il est pertinent que la région oriente ses actions vers de nouvelles approches centrées sur l'enfance par la promotion de l'adoption des mots de vie sains et des comportements favorables à la santé, le particulièrement chez les adolescents et les maintenir durant tout le cycle de la vie. Concernant le cadre régional pour l'intégration des services essentiels de lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles dans les soins de santé primaire, le Togo est en phase avec les défis et enjeux qui y sont présentés. Nous trouvons que les interventions et actions prioritaires du cadre sont pertinentes. Aussi, nous proposons que les aspects de promotion de la recherche opérationnelle sur les maladies non transmissibles y soient intégrés. Le Togo approuve le cadre et appelle à l'adoption des interventions et actions prioritaires qui y sont proposées. Je vous remercie, Madame la Présidente. Merci beaucoup, le Togo. Donc, l'Afrique du Sud et la Namibie suivra. Thank you, Chairperson. South Africa welcomes the regional framework for integrating essential non-communicable disease services in primary health care. The need for integrating essential non-communicable diseases services in primary health care is one of the key strategies required if we as countries and as a region are to meet the SDG target of a one-third reduction of premature mortality from NCDs by 2030 and the WHO target of a relative reduction in the overall mortality from NCDs by 2025. We, however, need a clear common understanding of what integration of services mean. Is this that NCD services should simply be provided at a PHC level, or is it that NCD services should be integrated with other health services, such as, for example, with chronic HIV care, with in-primary health care? In the introduction of the document, South Africa's effort to provide comprehensive and integrated chronic disease care is mentioned, but it would appear that this type of approach where services are truly integrated rather than provided as vertical care is not emphasized in terms of the objectives and goals of the document. Finally, it is of concern to us that because of the manner in which the milestones and targets are worded, it may seem too easy for countries to be doing nothing at all, and yet the regional targets will still be met because other countries are complying. For example, only half of all countries are expected to have essential medicines and basic technologies for NCDs in PHC facilities by 2020. This means that 50% of countries don't have to do anything in this regard. A better target will be, for example, that all member states should have at least 50% of a list of essential medicines and basic technologies in PHC facilities. This could then, for example, increase to 80% of medicines um, should be available in 2025, etc., rather than having 80% of countries complying by 2025. I thank you, Chairperson. Merci, l'Afrique du Sud. La Namibie a la parole, suivie des Seychelles. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, we cannot agree more that interventions need to be based on latest available evidence as articulated in the proposed framework. We understand that the step surveys is a useful methodology to help countries develop their own surveillance systems to monitor and fight against non-communicable diseases. It is, however, reported that in the past five years, only 11 member states have conducted staff surveys. This being the case, it would make sense that one of the actions to be pursued 
is to encourage and assist countries to conduct step surveys. Therefore, we would suggest that as part of the near-term target or milestone, by 2020, all member states should have completed step surveys. Madam Chairperson, we agree that preventing the major NCDs can be enhanced by addressing the four common modifiable risk factors, tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diet, and physical inactivity. We are also mindful that the risk, these risk factors are subject to individual behavior and how hard it is to effect behavioral change. While we support this approach as an effective strategy, we at the same time would like to see that the framework emphasize legislative and regulatory mechanism to effect positive change by controlling food content, food content, tobacco use and alcohol use, and so on. We have seen the positive effect of legislative influence on the use of tobacco in Namibia. Um, although yet to be confirmed with the survey, in Namibia we have witnessed a significant reduction in the prevalence of tobacco use, which is as a result of legislative intervention. In the same manner, countries must be guided on the approaches and mechanisms to legislate um, harmful content in food and drinks, and we would like to see this reflected in the framework. With these comments, Madam Chair, Namibia supports the regional framework for integrating essential NC, non-communicable diseases, services in PHC. I thank you, Madam Chair. Merci, les Seychelles. Vous prenez la parole, ensuite le Sénégal. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I too would like to emphasize the issue of integration, uh, which was only mentioned at the end of Dr. Shongwe's presentation. Surely it should be a central component of the entire strategy. It is true that when we are dealing with NCDs, there are some specific methodologies and tools that need to be developed. But surely when we are addressing the needs, the health needs of a person or a community, we do not separate transmissible communicable disease and non-communicable diseases. As an example, when a man or a father or a mother brings a child to the MCH clinic to be immunized, surely we should be thinking about immunizing the child not only against communicable diseases but also non-communicable diseases. If you teach a child to take a big breath and to enjoy the beauty and the benefit of a fresh air, that child hopefully will grow up knowing that smoking cigarettes is really a yucky thing to do. If you teach a child to enjoy playing, running about, dancing, surely that will lead the child to more physical activity. And even, Madam Chairperson, you could teach children to learn their numbers by moving their bodies. Thank you. Merci les Seychelles. Je passe la parole au Sénégal et Maurice se suivra. Merci. S'il vous plaît, Madame, je pourrais parer après Maurice parce que j'ai un petit problème avec l'ordinateur. Absolument aucun problème. Merci. Donc, euh, Maurice, alors. Madame Chair. The four major non-communicable diseases, that is cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, and chronic respiratory diseases, are the leading cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. But as has been mentioned, these diseases are largely preventable by addressing the four common modifiable risk factors, namely tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, and healthy diet, and lack of physical activity. In Mauritius, we are going through an epidemic of non-communicable diseases for the time being. 75% of the budget of the Ministry of Health is spent on NCD. The prevalence of hypertension is 25% in the adult population. Prevalence of diabetes is 22%. And prevalence of pre-diabetes, 19%. That makes a total of nearly 40% of people who are at risk of having cardiovascular problems, strokes, renal failure, eyes problem, and even amputation. 
can say it's increased as well in Mauritius, especially in the female population. On the preventive side, the government is working. We are doing screening at the work site, in the school, and at community level. The government has, enact, enact, has put tax on tobacco and alcohol. We have instituted the sugar tax as well. For example, like fizzy drink is prohibited in the school. And we have passed regulation to control the amount of saturated fat, saturated fat in the cooking oil. As we are aware, NCDs are chronic diseases, and the persist over time and require continuous management. And in order to meet these challenges, a framework which is relevant for both prevention and disease management in a healthcare setting is needed. And since this condition present mainly at the primary healthcare level, it is this system that is a primary care that should be strengthened and adopted for the prevention and management of NCDs. In Mauritius, we have a well-developed universal health care coverage. That is, anybody in Mauritius is within three kilometers of a health care point. And now we have already decentralized the NCD care to the periphery. The present framework for integrating essential NCD service in primary health care provides guidance to member states for the integration of essential NCD intervention in primary <coughs> health care service in order to scale up early detection, diagnosis, treatment of these chronic diseases. This document lists the issues and the challenges in integrating essential NCD service at primary health care in member states mainly talking about the inadequate advocacy and policy guidance, shortage of skilled human resources for optimal service delivery, limited financial resources, and weak health system for chronic care, amongst others. This document goes on to outline the vision, goal, and objective, targets, and milestone, and describes the guiding principle for implementation of the strategy in the African region. To conclude, to conclude Madam, we in Mauritius, we are now going through an epidemic of NCD, and we strongly welcome and support the regional framework for in integrating essential NCD service in the primary health care service. Thank you, Madam. Merci, Maurice. Si le Sénégal est prêt, sinon on passe au Botswana. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Très bien. Je voudrais tout d'abord euh, euh, féliciter le Secrétariat euh, pour la qualité du document qui a été présenté. C'est un document qui, effectivement, euh, reconnaît que les services disponibles ne tiennent pas toujours compte des besoins perçus et euh, que ces services sont souvent axés sur la maladie, avec un accent sur les soins curatifs en milieu hospitalier. Euh, ce document reconnaît que les, les populations des zones périphériques, malheureusement, sont souvent marginalisées. Ainsi, il est plus que nécessaire de procéder à la déconcentration et à la décentralisation des services offerts pour les principales maladies non transmissibles. Euh, le Sénégal est dans cette logique et euh, nous voudrions apporter quelques contributions dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre de euh, ce cadre euh, qui est proposé en soulignant euh, avec insistance sur certains défis euh, qui peuvent se présenter. Le premier défi euh, concerne la formation des acteurs de santé au niveau périphérique sur les protocoles de prévention et de traitement des maladies ciblées. Euh, nous pensons également que euh, un des défis qui risque de se poser est la non-disponibilité des kits de diagnostic et de prise en charge. Euh, C'est dire donc que cette stratégie ne saurait être effective euh, sans un système de financement innovant euh, qui garantisse un investissement en tout cas dans ces domaines-là et nous avons eu je pense la possibilité de parler euh, tout à l'heure de, 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 de la couverture euh, sanitaire universelle qui pourrait être effectivement euh, un des moyens euh, pour euh, investir dans ce domaine. Euh, le Sénégal a également euh, essayé certaines, euh, certains protocoles dans le cadre donc, de, de cette décentralisation et de même que l'utilisation de nouvelles technologies telles que le téléphone mobile euh, dans la euh, prévention des maladies non transmissibles 
et également l'introduction de la responsabilité sociétale d'entreprise. Nous pensons que ce sont des approches qui sont très promoteuses dans ce contexte de ressources limitées. En conclusion, Madame la Présidente, euh, nous pensons que la, la réorganisation des soins de santé primaires qui intègre le diagnostic précoce et le contrôle des maladies non transmissibles doit être un objectif immédiat et c'est pour cette raison que le Sénégal soutient euh, ce euh, cadre régional pour l'intégration des services essentiels de lutte contre les maladies non transmissibles dans les soins de santé primaire. Je vous remercie, Madame la Présidente. Merci, le Sénégal. Le Botswana a la parole. Euh, ensuite, ce sera la Tanzanie. Thank you, Madam Chair. Botswana acknowledges the report on regional framework for integrating NCD services and primary health care. Botswana aligns herself to the set vision targets and milestones set out in the framework. And to this end, Madam Chair, Botswana concur with the guiding principles laid out for the implementation. Botswana has a large burden of non-communicable diseases as a result of rapid development and high prevalence of HIV. According to the 2014 step survey, 18% percent adults smoke. 5% consume alcohol at harmful levels and 30% are obese. Madam Chairperson, Botswana developed and endorsed its first national primary care guidelines for adults in November 2016. This was in consultation with stakeholders and partners, aligning the said guidelines with the WHO guidelines for primary health care in low resource settings. The essential package of NCD service described in the primary health care guidelines includes preventive, early detection, timely treatment, referral, and rehabilitation. Following endorsement of the national guidelines in the year 2016, Botswana has embarked on a phased expedite national rollout starting in eight districts that have established comprehensive diabetes centers with nurses trained as focal persons to decentralize the NCD services at primary health care level. Assessment of national system readiness was conducted through structured questionnaire, reviewing availability of essential medicines, equipment, laboratory tests, and staffing at all facilities. Madam Chair, recognizing the urgent need to build human capacity for healthcare workers, the country developed a structured and comprehensive curriculum for management of NCDs at primary healthcare levels. In view of improving access to essential NCD services in primary healthcare, the Botswana National Essential Medicine List was reviewed in the year 2015 and is fully aligned with the NCD medicines described with who pen. Madam Chairperson, Botswana adopts and endorses the proposed actions in the regional framework, and I thank you. Je remercie le Botswana. Juste pour vous dire qu'il reste la Tanzanie, Lesotho et l'Ouganda, et nous devons arrêter dans cinq minutes pour pouvoir euh, aller à, euh, à l'événement sur euh, Rollback Malaria. Donc, euh, a bon entendeur, salut, comme on dit. Donc, je passe la parole à, à la Tanzanie. Madame Chairperson, Tanzania welcomes the regional framework for integrating essential and communicable disease services in primary health care. This is a long-awaited strategy in the region, given the rising burden of non-communicable diseases in this part of the world. This strategy, which aims at integration of essential and communicable diseases, services in the primary health care in order to scale up early detection, diagnosis, and treatment. This is ideal model to the African continent. Madam Chairperson, in the context of an integrated approach and part of the national commitment to develop policies and plans for prevention and control of non-communicable diseases, Tanzania has developed and launched the national non-communicable disease strategy that spans 2016 to 2020. 
in the National Cancer Control Strategy of the 2013 to 2020. Both strategies are focused on equity and access while addressing health-related sustainable development goals. Tanzania applied for the Gavi funding to scale up human papilloma virus vaccination and we are planning to integrate the HPV vaccine in the extended immunization program. Our cervical cancer screening services have been integrated into the reproductive and child health services in healthcare facilities. Madam Chairperson, in accordance with the existing global strategy to reduce the shared risk factors for non-communicable diseases and then combating the rising incidence of cancer, Tanzania has launched a national physical activity program which was launched by the Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania. This uh, declared every second Saturday of the month to be for promotion of physical activity, screening and health promotion. In this regard, we are looking at reducing the shared risk factors for the entire four World Health Organization common non-communicable diseases that is physical inactivity. Madam Chairperson, we hope that through this regional strategy and its priority interventions, member states will be able to adequately address non-communicable diseases. Of worth to note is that member states in African region are not silent in addressing non-communicable diseases. Rather, some are addressing non-communicable diseases using various primary health care approaches. We recommend the WHO Secretariat to develop mechanisms for sharing best practices of primary health care models which address non-communicable diseases across the region. Madam Chairperson, investing in research activities in the African region is also key to inform non-communicable diseases policy. Prevention and control care programs in the region will also benefit from such research activities. We must also find creative ways to tackle non-communicable diseases and to pull resources and expertise from all those involved in the delivery of healthcare, including private sector, as to ensure the greatest impact. United Republic of Tanzania would like to thank the World Health Organization for its continuous support. Tanzania endorses the framework with its proposed actions. Thank you. Je vous remercie la Tanzanie. Donc, euh, le Lesotho a la parole et nous allons finir avec l'Ouganda. Merci. Thank you, Chair. The Kingdom of Lesotho applauds the Secretariat for a well thought and written framework for integrating essential non communicable disease services in primary health care. Indeed, non communicable diseases are not only the major killers of our communities, but also have become the highest consumers of our health budget. As has been pointed out, Madam Chair, the four well-known and understood uh, risk factors are tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diet, and physical activity uh, unfortunately needs a multi-sectoral approach to address them. For, as, for example, healthy diet means ability to produce healthy foods and food production is the responsibility of the other sector. The health sector, Madam Chair, has to play a pivotal role by including in the essential health care package management of non-communicable diseases at primary level. It is well known that timely screening of non-communicable diseases leads to early identification and appropriate management. However, if non-communicable diseases are to be controlled, it is crucial that other factors come into play. Madam Chair, this includes, for example, trade, which issues licenses to regulate tobacco and liquor selling and use. Education, which would provide school
cool health. We also need agricultural sector, Madam Chair, for nutrition. Our endeavors to deal with these diseases without nutrition will forever remain a hazy mirage. To that effect, these have become part of the, have to, should become part of the constituency to fight the non-communicable diseases. The sectors, Madam Chair, should clearly develop strategic uh, plans and targets for controlling non-communicable diseases. And this should be aligned with health service delivery levels. Lessons learned in the fight against HIV and AIDS, TB and malaria should be translated and be used as strategies for controlling non-communicable diseases. There is need, Madam Chair, for coordination at local, regional, and country level. There has to be strong advocacy and resource mobilization, as was done previously. There is also need to strengthen and target primary prevention strategies. Screening for non-communicable diseases should be widely accessible, hence training of community health workers on screening and testing of non-communicable diseases is crucial. As has been shown, school health programs should target all age groups from preschool to tertiary. Also, they should be part of the school curricula and should be facilitated by school teachers themselves. Healthcare workers should periodically be capacitated to improve management of non-communicable diseases and basic equipment for screening particularly should be avail availed at primary level. Madam Chair, it is also crucial that capacity building to manage complications of non-communicable diseases such as uh, renal and cancer sepsis uh, become part of the, the framework. In our case as a kingdom, for instance, with the help of sister countries and development partners, we've just established renal dialysis and preparations are underway to have a cancer center. In conclusion, Madam Chair, the Kingdom of Lesotho <coughs> welcomes this World Health Organization report and its implementation. I thank you. Merci, le Lesotho. J'en appelle donc à la compréhension de ma sœur de l'Uganda pour que euh, nous puissions assez rapidement euh, rejoindre euh, la session de Rollback Malaria. Vous avez donc la parole. Merci, euh, Madame la Ministre. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Uganda thanks the Secretariat for this document on integrating NCDs into primary health healthcare. We note, however, Chair, that um, the document lists a number of cost-effective interventions which are population-based, and we do support the, support the proposed action in the document. However, Chair, we note that um, the Brazzaville Declaration by the Ministers of Health in 2011 did uh, list a number of um, NCDs. And I see cancer, uh, cancer talked about <laughs> diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, but the sickle cell disease is missing, and mental health, and we do propose that these be included as well, because these are now major challenges in our countries. 
Chair, one of the challenges faced in financing for NC is the financing for NCDs, and this has been mentioned. And the challenge we face as a country, and this is also in the, all the other countries, is that treatment for the NCDs is very expensive, and the majority of the population cannot afford. Prevention, early detection, and treat treatment are there for important aspects that have to be embraced. We note, Chair, that a number of countries have laws and policies on tobacco, but very few countries have regulation on alcohol. And Uganda, as a country, we're already in advanced stages of um, passing the alcohol control policy, and thereafter we shall come up with an alcohol bill to regulate this sector. We, however, need to pay attention to the enforcement because we have a number of countries have laws. I visit some of the countries sometimes and when you're moving on the streets chair you note that people are smoking and yet there are laws that ban uh, smoking in public places. Majority of our populations chair have poor seeking health behaviors and for diseases like cancer and diabetes, it's normally difficult to correct the situation if detected late. And this makes palliative care an indispensable response. We need chair to improve access to palliative care medicines and deal with the legislation and of course the human resources for the palliative care services. We also have to focus on education and training services and I want to just inform colleagues that Uganda has courses at certificate level in palliative care, diploma level, and at degree level. We have also, Chair, embraced the task shifting again in palliative care, and this has enabled us to provide services to our rural communities. We are one of the few countries that have allowed non-doctors to administer morphine to those that need it. And of course, with this, our focus and aim is to ensure that people die in, with dignity and die without pain. So member states need to commit more resources if we are to make palliative care services available to the entire population. With this, Chair, Uganda does support uh, this framework document and thank the Secretariat for his presentation. Uh, merci, Luganda. Je vais donc uh, proposer que nous allons donc arrêter là, bien sûr. Et je vais donc proposer au Dr Shangwe que l'on commence demain matin avec donc uh, les, la synthèse uh, qu'il va faire et l'adoption donc de, de ce document. Alors, uh, je vous rappelle donc que uh, Nous allons donc nous rendre pour le partenariat Faire reculer le paludisme, qui est l'événement de ce soir dans la salle Kalala Room. Et c'était prévu pour 20 heures, donc nous, sommes, nous avons accusé un petit retard. Et je pense que nous allons pouvoir commencer demain à la même heure qu'aujourd'hui, 8h45, demain matin, simplement parce qu'il y a également un petit déjeuner Gavi. Donc je passe la parole donc au secrétariat s'il y a des informations complémentaires à apporter. Je vous remercie pour votre aimable contribution et participation à cette session. Donc la parole au secrétariat. Good evening. Thank you, dear chair. I have four announcements. The first one is on transport, transport for delegate. Transport will be provided at uh, um, 8, 15 minutes uh, now after the meeting and at 9, 15 minutes after tonight's side event. Can we be informed that there will be offered a cocktail at the side event and transport will be organized after the cocktail at 10, 13 minutes. Second announcement, dear delegates, please be informed that the side events on the launch of the report on the status of the blood transfusion access in the region 
is on Thursday at 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. in Kalala room up to the reception. Then it is tomorrow, Thursday at 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. in Kalala room. Third announcement, we would want to request the delegates who are traveling tomorrow to bring in the morning the language to the reception of the Elephant Hills Hotel in order to better organize the transportation to the airport. Logistical measures have been put in place accordingly. Uh, fourth announcement, I want to leave the floor to Dr. Zawaira. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, uh, honorable ministers. You will remember that yesterday, after the intervention of Gabon concerning uh, vaccine affordability, RD requested that we have a small meeting to dis just to brainstorm and figure out while we have the benefit of the Gavi board members with us. So tomorrow around, uh, at the morning tea break, we will have a meeting with those countries that have never been Gavi eligible to mix with those that are transitioning so that we can share ideas and be able to map the way forward. That will be morning tea break in the Kalala room. Invitations have already been sent out. Thank you very much. Merci donc la session est la séance est levée. Merci.